Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, D'Anthony, here we are, brother. Yes. Another episode of Drinking Bros. Uh, we got Will Chesney on the show tonight. Yep, we do. Former Navy SEAL. Author of No Ordinary Dog. Goddamn right. Which is the story of Cairo, the yep. dog who was there at the uh, Bin Laden raid. Yeah. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, it is crazy. It's almost been 10 years since the Bin Laden raid. It's getting close. Yeah, where yeah. were you when you heard? Ooh, man. Let's see, what year was that? 2011? Uh-huh. In uh, May 1st, 2011. Yeah. I would have been in uh, Wisconsin. No shit. You don't, yeah. you don't remember like where you were and when it was like, oh, man. I was on an airplane, actually, I think, when the news came out. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't hear about it until like three or four hours later. And as the plane was getting, as the plane was getting ready to land... My phone, like Start cell service, up. started working again, and it's just like text, 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 news alert, news alert. I'm like, oh, shit, something went down. Yeah. So I started checking. I'm like, holy shit. And then they announced it on the airplane. It's like, just, hey, just, we, we want to let you know, since everybody's getting service again, uh, that Bin Laden's been killed. Did the like, whole plane shit. fucking erupt? Yeah, of course it did. That's awesome. It didn't blow up, though, because, you know, he's, uh, obviously. Bin Laden was dead. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. He wasn't there to... <laughs> yeah, clack off clack the off. old... Uh... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I, uh, boy, I, w- I was at a bar, huge shock. Um, but, uh, yeah, I heard the news at a bar, and, and everybody stopped when uh, the president came on to speak yeah. about it. Um, but I feel like everybody by then knew what it was going to be. We did, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and everybody was kind of texting and saying what had gone down. And, you know, I mentioned it to Will in the upcoming interview mm. how uh, The Rock, ironically, was the first one uh, who had tweeted about it and was just like, huh? Uh, and then some other friends tweeted and was just like, all right, maybe this is real and maybe it's going down. Yeah. And it was on a, I remember it was on a Sunday night, um, where it was one of those nights for us where I think we were just at a normal dinner, you know, mm. like one of those restaurants slash bars things. And, uh, everyone ordered drinks after that. So, you know, everybody was celebrating mm-hmm. like, oh shit, <laughs> this is amazing. And I remember seeing those images in New York City of like Times Square. Yeah. People starting to show up in Times Square and with and the American flags. Like and Yankee and Stadium and, and shit. Yeah, yeah man. That was crazy. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a cool moment, man. And um, I think there was, that was one of those periods in time. We haven't seen it recently. Like after 9-11, we saw a period of time where no one cared about politics. And then we saw one after Bin Laden was dead. But I, like, I kind of expected that to happen when someone, frankly, uh, disappointed that that didn't happen when someone like Soleimani was killed. Mm-hmm. I expected it because that guy is responsible for the fucking 83 Be- Beirut bombings, the first act of like, ex- like terrorism like that from the Arab community. Yeah, I, modern, a lot of those like, IEDs, right? Didn't yeah. he invent it? Or, um... Well, that, he, they, they like uh, vehicle-borne IEDs blow up the ba- the marine base in Beirut, killed fucking a bunch of marines, mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff this guy's been involved in. He is the architect of the relationship between the uh, terrorists on the on the Sunni and Shia side. He's the architect of that relationship. Right. Plus, he's a direct connect to Russian shit. I expected when that guy died that it would be like Bin Laden dying, and it wasn't. So I don't know when we're going to see something like that again, like one of those cathartic, apolitical moments that happen where everyone is like fucking... There we go. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, uh, you know, in particular with Bin Laden, it was so infamous what had happened, yeah. obviously. And, like, he was the guy, and he was on the run forever, and yeah. you couldn't find him. And then there was, well, we're never going to find him. Or, you know, there was also rumors, too, that he had died in the mountains yeah. and that we would never know that he died and yep. all these hidden recordings and recordings coming out and all this other shit. With Soleimani, <laughs> he was there. And people he was didn't know who plain he was. Sight. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and he... You're right. People didn't really know who he was. But um, he's the architect of a lot of, like, look, the U.S. got itself into a lot of trouble by getting involved in Middle Eastern politics, by, like, helping to overthrow the fucking Democratic elected Iranian government and all right. sorts of other shit. Right. Not, not following up on the Cold War and, and providing funding and education in Afghanistan. We did a lot of stuff wrong. Mm-hmm. But this guy was the architect of terrorism in the modern world. Like, what we know as terrorism now, this right. guy is largely responsible for it. And I really expected there to be some cathartic moment after he died. But no, it was like, you didn't have the right to kill that guy. You're trying to start a war. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. dude's been murdering Americans for 40 years, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. If I see him on the street, he's dead. Yeah. Like, that's our attitude. He was a target of opportunity. I, I, I always thought in our lifetime, because I was, I was trying to think about this before we did the show today, yeah. um, 
who would be next. And I, I thought for sure it would have been Kim Jong-un. Uh, here's the problem with North Korea. If we overthrow them, then we have to govern that shit. Right. And we're not doing that. Well, but I, 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 I thought he would have been taken out sooner or later. I didn't think it was going to happen like this with a botched heart surgery and that's it. Is he really dead? I think he's dead. Do you? I don't know. Who Ro- knows? Speaking of, of Bin Laden, Rob O'Neill. Rob yeah. O'Neill says he's dead. Yeah. Uh, I, so, I so does uh, Dakota. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know. I can't... I'm trying to think of a good reason, and I can't, why North Korea would not just put him out there if he was alive. Like, if he is... Exactly, If yeah. he is alive, you would think, because, look, if, if you're a leader of a country, especially an authoritarian country, and you fake your death or something or, or don't or there's a rumor that you're dead you get out there and squash that because if right. you don't there's always a power vacuum in a place like that oh yeah there's always people who are on the second and, and and third tiers trying to work their way up always that's how fucking authoritarian governments work mm-hmm. so i can't he's got to be dead right he's got to be yeah and when, look there was a newspaper article that came out uh maybe two days ago uh where they had a picture of him at a ribbon cutting ceremony it was a tgi fridays i think yeah he was ordering endless appetizers he was getting mozz- mozzarella sticks endless mozz sticks over and over again and uh he exploded no they they put out a picture in, in the north korean paper yeah. of him at a, a ribbon cutting ceremony for something and they said no he's alive he's doing fine and everybody should believe this and it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, you've got to do something public with a newspaper next to your fucking face. Well, do you remember those? I think he's brain dead. I, me, personally, I think he's brain dead, and they're just trying to figure out the succession. Yeah. Do you remember, the, do you remember those, uh, those photos they, they put up on social media and to the press a couple of years ago where it was like they photoshopped. They, they took this old computer bank that they had, mm-hmm. and it was like old school fucking tube monitor style computers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they photo they clearly had photoshopped like very advanced graphics on them. So I'm like that computer can't even do that, dude. What are you doing? And it's him sitting there like, oh yeah, it's like a stock photo. Yeah. that no one paid enough attention to. <laughs> fucking dumb, dumb. So I, I don't. I, he's got to be dead. I think so. I think he's brain dead, and they're trying to figure out yeah. who's going to take over. Uh, that's my personal guess. But I would have I would have said it, my money would have been on. Him getting taken out. Because, like, after that, going down the list, right? You mm-hmm. probably have Putin on there. No, we wouldn't. Putin is mean, the president of a country. Putin so is a, like, eh, Putin, he's not really a terrorist. While we disagree with him on a lot of things, he is a reasonable human being. He really is. And you can tell from that video where he grabbed his dog out of the hands of that fucking foreign minister's arms. Like, he saw the guy holding him up by the nape of his neck, and the dog was getting uncomfortable. He was like, oh, give me that dog. Putin, yeah. Putin is just a guy that was raised in a different culture, and his allegiance lies in his country. That's it. Yeah. Well, I can deal with a guy like that. We're going to have disagreements. Maybe they turn into, like, little scuffles here and there, but you can disagree with a guy like that and move on. The people in China, it's, it's dip more difficult, right? And North Korea is like China but with down syndrome. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they don't, and I don't mean that in a, in a, like, I don't mean they're literally retarded, but they don't have any information. Right. Like they are complete. They don't have the, the physical capacity to make, or the mental capacity to make good decisions at the, at the world level, because they don't have any of the information. Like some of those people in that country don't even know there's an outside world. No, not at all. Like it's crazy as fuck. No. So if you were to invade that country and kill those people or kill the leaders in that country, you would have to like spend probably 20 years educating people on the rest of the world and how wor- the world works. We need more famous terrorists is, is what we need. Uh, I like, I like the eco terrorists from captain planet. I like, he, so like the one dude with the pig nose was pretty cool. I, I'm going to bring up the guy that had a huge Facebook campaign. Do you remember that guy? A terrorist? Uh, he was God damn it, man. Uh, no, he was in Africa, and it was alleged that he was killing oh, all these people. Oh, uh, Coney. That's it, Coney. Yeah, Coney 2016 or whatever. I thought was. Coney was going to be the guy where it was just like, all right, there's a terrorist we can all get behind, right? Is that dude still alive? He Not only is he still alive, but the guy who founded it uh, was bilking all this money, mm-hmm. and uh, he lost his shit. So he lost his mind and was taking a bunch of drugs. Uh, and they found him walking buck naked through the streets of San Diego. White guy. Well, I mean, who had, who had started the Coney Fund? That's not. Uh, what's her What's her name? Um, Ellen's wife. Not Ellen's wife. It's not that. It's not her. Who was the woman that was that did a bunch of ecstasy and woke up in somebody else's living room? 
Was that Harrison Ford's? No, it's not Harrison Ford's wife. Um, God, you know who I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I know you're what talking about, and name? I wouldn't have kicked her out of the house either. Oh, no, maybe it was Alan's wife. The woman uh, her from ex-wife. A, from Arrested Development. What's her name? No, you're talking about Portia de Rossi. That's no, no, a, no the That's old Ellen's one. wife. The old one, then. Fuck. Fuck, I don't remember her name, but she like woke up in somebody's living room. Which after is great. Doing ecstasy all night. Hey, look. Tom Brady just did it the other day. <laughs> he did. He, he just did. walked he into the wrong house. I don't know how you do that. Like, if you're, maybe Tom Brady just like expects to be let into any door that he puts his hand on the, on the door handle. I can see that woman's face in my mind. I cannot remember her name, but I think, I think you're right. I think it was Ellen's first ex girlfriend. You're right. Um, but she rolled in on ecstasy and then asked to take a shower at that guy's house. And I he, think he that's called the police. Though. Same here. And I would have let her stay. Great. Let's party. Mm-hmm. Let's figure it out. Um, she was in that Vince Vaughn movie, she was the attorney. <sighs> Yeah, it's gonna it's what gonna eat you up. Name? It's gonna eat you up inside. Some there are people at home yelling her name at us right now, screaming. At we the cannot radio. hear you because we recorded this prior, and also you are in your home. Do you know who Ellen's first ex girlfriend was, Giorgio? Yeah, look it up. Um, we're t- this this is gonna kill me if we, we, we if we don't get it. I love how we have the dog handler from the Bin was Laden raid on. Was it Anne Hesh? That's Anne it, Hish. Anne Hesh. Yes. Yeah. God damn it, we got it, Anne Hesh. I love it. We that we have the the dog handler from the Bin Laden raid, but all <laughs> you and I care about is is Anne Hesh. I already talked to him on ecstasy, <laughs> walking into somebody's house demanding to take a shower. Yeah. Well, hey, look. I mean, it was. Yeah. Funny. So with Coney, man, we need more <clears throat> famous terrorists. Because that's the only way, that's the only way we're gonna have another huge party like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, don't don't mess with cats. Like, put shit out on social media and make this guy unpopular. Yeah, that's all you got to do. So yeah, Coney's still alive, right? That's still going uh, on. He, let's see, he is the according to Wikipedia, he's still the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, a guerrilla group operating in Uganda. There you go. I don't know how that relates to Uganda Knuckles or anything, but how much money do they raise for that guy? <clears throat> it was I mean I it was know. something crazy. Yeah. And again, you can look it up on YouTube. The guy who started it, the white guy. Hmm? Buck naked. Lost his mind. Screaming huh? through the streets of San Diego. Yeah. And like a like a residential neighborhood. Like completely, Maybe because lost his mind. Well, I, <laughs> there was rumors that there was pressure that, you know, people were like, Oh, what are you doing with all these millions of dollars? Yeah. Are you stealing the money? Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, No, I'm looking for, for Coney. Coney never got caught. Like it was a whole weird sitch. You Acor- know? According to this article, uh, in uh, God, where is it? Oh, I lost it, but well, it's on Wikipedia now. But it says uh, by April 2017, he was still at large, but his force had shrunk from like 3,000 people to right around 100. So eh, basically, maybe the money did something. He's just running like a fraternity over there at this point. Mm-hmm. He's got 42 children, so that's 42 of them. So there's like Yeesh. 58 other people. Hanging out, I guess. I don't know if they count the kids in his gang or whatever this is. I don't know how that works out. But if look, if you're gonna have a gang, you might as well have them be your own kids. You know why not? I mean, Uh, that's that's what fucking Philip Rivers is doing for Indianapolis Colts. Ten kids. Yeah, ten kids. No, one of them went to college. Ballard told us that one of them went to college. So yeah, but now he's only got nine kids at the game. He still counts as a kid. You know what I'm saying? In real life. Uh, before we hop into the interview with uh, Will, we got some sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You think they they put Bin Laden in a in a ghost bed after that? No, I think they threw him into the ocean. <laughs> they didn't throw him. They wrapped him up in a sheet and all that other shit, right? Then tossed didn't him. Didn't you have to... Don't you have to follow the rules of the Muslim world where you put them on a board and put them out to sea yeah. and all that shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they brought like a Muslim chaplain on board to do all that shit or not, to be honest. Yeah. Like I would assume they probably would have because it's such, it was the Obama administration. It's such a cover your ass administration. They probably did that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I personally would have pissed on him. Isn't Obama, he's Muslim, right? No. Oh, he's not? No. That's oh, not real? Why would he be Muslim? I don't know. That's what I heard. No. Yeah, that's no. the rumor. No, he's not. Uh, you never know. His that's mom. His mom was a Christian lady from Hawaii. Ho- yeah, but Hawaii. but the dad was from Kenya. Yeah, but he never even met that motherfucker. Did he meet his mom? Uh, I this one time. I don't know. His I swear story, to God, to this this you. one time, my friend. Uh, I, I guess I was I was in the army, so I was like twenty six, maybe. She called me and she's like, "Hey, I'm pregnant." And like her and her husband, like, "Hey, I'm pregnant." And I'm like, "Oh, cool. Are you sure that you're the mom?" 
And <laughs> there was a 15 second pause or what seemed like 15 seconds where she was trying to figure out if she was stupid or if I'm stupid. Yeah. Like one of us is stupid and I don't know who it is yet until I figure this part out. It would turn out to be both of us both of actually because yeah. Yeah, yeah. she participated in my bullshit. Yeah. 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 Uh, she, she was the mom. Yeah, she way. was. Yeah. And she had that baby. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah. Good for her. We had that baby. Hopefully she had it on a ghost bed, you know? Yeah. Um, by great. the way, the offer still stands. If you conceived a child in a ghost bed and you have video of it and you can provide it to Dan Holloway. I need the conception and I need proof that the baby is alive now. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, you can send that to, to our Instagrams at Dan Holloway or at ST James, ST James mm-hmm. on Instagram. We just need to verify it and then we'll get you a mattress. We spoke to the fine people at ghost bed. And they said that they were okay with it. You know? They want there to be more drinking bros. So like, yeah, yeah. we'll support that. Have, a, yeah. have another kid. Yeah. Have a kid on a mattress. Yeah. Um, look, they're going to do that 25% off sale all through the quarantine, uh, which is great. So uh, they're, they're in it with everyone. Um, and let's face it, if you're stuck inside your house, you might as well have a comfortable mattress. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. 25% off everything in the store. <laughs> Uh, and as always, they get a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest uh, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Mm. Next up, we got dukecannon.com. D'Anthony, my favorite, dude. Big fan. It's become one of my faves. Uh, this is the, the, the finest body wash in the land. I'm going to hold it up to camera here. So it's nine bucks for, for one of these big guys, mm-hmm. right? Um, <laughs> they only have four, four amazing scents of it. Uh, I love the old glory. You're the naval supremacy guy. I am. Everybody was already a fan of this anyways, and you're like, hey, man, can you please get them on the show and well, get a one promo of, code for them? They're a veteran-owned yeah, company. Yeah, it's one of the bigger. So, I mean, they're, for veteran-owned companies, there's a couple of big ones, like Duke Cannon, mm-hmm. Black Rifle Coffee is one of them. Yep. Um, by the way. Drinking Bros 20 at Black Rifle Coffee. That's right, yes. And uh, uh, Kill code. Cliff, who we'll get to in a second. Yep. But uh, So there was a funny thing that happened with Black Rifle over the weekend. Um because of Trudeau's new bullshit with assault rifles, there was a company called Black Rifle Company mm-hmm. in Canada that got shut down. Right. And people were like DMing me like, hey, Black Rifle get banned in Canada? I'm like, no. <laughs> but that would have been great PR, wouldn't it's it? next. You like, know it's coming, right? Uh, Dan Sharp Pop Smoke, for those out, out there that don't know who he is, uh, he, he said like, hey, you guys, uh, maybe you should tell him to fucking... Uh, pay some dictator to ban Black Rifle there for good PR. I'm like, yeah, it's not a bad idea. I, I don't. I, hey, I, for real, I don't think it's that far away. No, get Putin to come out. Like, just fuck because Black of the Rifle name. Coffee, oh, man. Yeah. Fuck you. Just because of the name, I guarantee you that's the next step for for like a a guy like like Trudeau, a cuck like yeah. Trudeau. He is a fold your penis in half and slide it into a vagina kind of guy. If he even gets close, yeah, to a vagina. Yeah. Uh, but if you are getting close to a vagina, you better use some Duke Cannon body wash. Yep. Best in the biz. Again, veteran-owned company. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 15% off. Uh, you get four for 30, and it lasts forever. Mine yep. Again, mine's the old glory. I'm curious everybody else's <laughs> uh, faves. But this was one that you guys reached out to us and said, please get a promo code. We love them. We use them forever, and uh, and luckily they were cool with it. Yeah, it took the, us a couple months. The current it took us a couple months to get to it. This did guys. yeah, it took a little while. But the current bottle I'm on now, I think I've had for 45 days, about 45 yep. days, and uh, it's still got about maybe an eighth left. Yeah. So you're talking about like almost two months worth in one of these fucking nine dollar bottles. Yeah, man. Like it, you can't go wrong with this stuff. It's amazing. We're we're gigantic fans of Duke Cannon. Go to DukeCannon.com. Promo code Drinking Bros for fifteen percent off and free shipping. And these things are big and they're heavy, so that free shipping is uh, mm-hmm. uh, something uh, you need. Next up, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Man, I love them. Uh, I'm amped every time I get to read them because I drink this shit every day. I drink a can literally every day after work. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been tripling up on shows here for for all of them, from uh, Drinking Broettes to Ross Patterson Revolution to Drinking Bros, Drinking Bros Sports. Uh, we've been doubling down on all the episodes, and uh, I've been drinking a lot of CBD on the way home to keep the old voice uh, going every day. 25 milligrams in every can, three amazing flavors. We got uh, Orange Kush, Mango, and the grapest of all time, the Grapes My Jam. I know I've said it a million times. There's no THC in it, so you will not piss hot on a drug test. 80% of our listeners are, are either military or first responder, and uh, we know you guys got to take drug tests. 
Killcliff is the only name you can trust in the CBD world. So go to killcliffcbd.com today. And get a case of this shit. Um, is it 30% off or? I just think uh, on Mother's, after Mother's Day, they went back down to 20. Damn it. Yep. Just Damn it. it. 20% off. Still a monster savings and free shipping. Yeah. Uh, with the promo code Drinking Bros at killcliffcbd.com. Yet another veteran owned company. Yep. Um, which is great. And uh, last but not least, we got MacWeldon.com. New to the show, Dan. They're very uh, comfy. Very comfy. Very I, comfy. I like their men's pant- panties. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very comfortable. They don't cost. Pantaloons. They don't cost uh, like 50 bucks. Yep. Like another, there's this company out there and they have a, a dude's first name followed by another dude's first name. Uh-huh. And that's the name of their company. And they charge an exorbitant amount of money for a plain white t-shirt and a pair of men's panties okay yes just i need quality shit that's not expensive it's affordable Affordable. god damn it uh so so mac weldon look man uh, you can sign up uh phase one you get free shipping phase two boom you spend 200 bucks you get 20 percent off yeah and uh (laughs) you you, you stay through that kids you get 20 percent off for the entire year right now at macweldon.com you get 20% 20% off of the promo code Drinking Bros mm-hmm. uh, at checkout. Buy everything you possibly can. Go for those t-shirts, especially. I know. If, you're so working in a, if you're working in an office or you're wearing a fucking uniform that has a white shirt under it, not, mm-hmm. a, not a tan one, not a military one, man, you go through those shirts so fucking fast. Yeah. Like, I just, I've turned it on where it just, like, automatically ships socks to my house now. Yeah. Pretty Best much. in the biz, dude. Yeah. Go to MacWeldon.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off. And then everybody was asking, uh, because the, there's another UFC fight tomorrow night, Yep. Uh, whether or not uh, the promo code for mybookie.com of Drinking Bros mm-hmm. is still doubles your deposit. It does. Um, I didn't get any confirmation of why. You know, We looked at these dates a few weeks back, you and I, yep. and we had John Anik <laughs> on the show. Yep. I didn't get any confirmation as to why UFC is dropping a Wednesday night. I don't know, yeah. I, mean, I think they're just trying to put content out there, to be honest. It's awesome. And yeah. I'm, look, I'm all fucking it's, for it. It's, but that, I was... it's that and Korean baseball. It, wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow <laughs> and you can watch Korean baseball on ESPN. I'm not kidding. I know. Like, that's it. So I know. Like, but the fact that Dana White's a fuck it, we're going on a Wednesday, yeah. is great. Because there's nothing out. And yeah. all of these shows, um, even Tyler Gray, like for, uh, for SEAL Team. Yeah. Their, their season finale ended, and that's that's it, man. It they wasn't even the season finale. They, I, they, they actually didn't get needed, to shoot it. Yeah, so yeah. Well, they'll pick it back up because uh, this is, I guess, semi-breaking news, but they got renewed for season four. Yeah, there we go. So they're going to be in, by the end of I this next you. season, they're going to be in syndication, which means Tyler is pretty much good. Yeah, good and for all Tyler. All those guys, man, AJ I'm Buckley, fucking, fucking Max Terrio, fucking good. David Boreanaz. Uh, all of them, fucking Neil Brown Jr. They're Neil all Brown, great. that's awesome. Judd's great. The it, whole fucking it's crew a is big great. deal, man. Because it, as an actor, to to get on a show like that, once you hit syndication, you pretty much retire. Yeah, uh, that's the dirty secret. Yep. Uh, but it's awesome, man. But it, the the problem is, it's fucking hard. None of this shit goes. to syndication. It's easy, you know. Streaming has actually made it so easier, so hard because it's eighty eight episodes instead of a hundred now. Right, but the pay is less, so it is. Yes, you don't Absolutely. get the same residuals. Yep. If you're on a network television show, yeah. that is still the highest uh, amount of money you can make as an actor. Yep. So good for Tyler, man. That's fucking awesome. I told you, you get picked up. I mean, yeah, shit. There's no. There's I mean, no the, pilot they do great. Either, they hardly. do great. Yeah, yeah, and that, we love the show. We love Tyler, all, all those guys out there. That's great yeah. news. Um, and and again, man, if you're uh, tomorrow night, if you're watching the UFC fight, which we will be, um, mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Do some gambling. Deposit. I know we are. Uh, we're gambling. The I'm shit gambling out of these on shit. Things. Like uh, I was walking around in my neighborhood. I'm not yesterday. betting the Korean baseball, by the way. No. A lot of people were asking us. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You don't. I I do, but you don't bet regular season baseball. I don't because you don't follow it the way I. Do. I mean, you it's you not follow that. it. I just but, it's junky shit. Like there's too many games. But that to me is more challenging. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it 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 and it, it definitely is. It, I just I feel like it helps me strategy wise later on. When the, the playoffs start, because I don't yeah. do it every day, but I do it on a regular enough basis where I'm keeping track of what KPIs, key performance indicators, mm-hmm. mean so what what you know what I mean. 
So I think it's, uh, you know. Friends of mine who do bet on baseball go against the big pitcher. So, like, you know, a Clayton Kershaw, the odds are going to be monstrous if you take the other team any night that he's pitching. Yes, yeah, so you bet a smaller amount against him. Right? Correct. You can make more money. So I have some yeah. friends that do that. I just I can't get down on it, man. It's uh, baseball so long. Well, that's this, like grinding it out. That's like, different, that's like day trading stocks, though. You're just grinding it out. For, yeah. pe- for people that enjoy the sport itself, that's really not all that I mean, you're you're trying you're trying to grind it out to make money at that point. Yeah, that's just like following the algorithm to make money. That's not like my it's team's like day playing. trading. Yeah, yeah. My, my team's playing. I want them to win. I'm going to bet on my fucking team. That's not the same thing. Yeah, but I'll be betting on these fights tomorrow night oh, at yeah. uh, mybookie.com. <laughs> promo code Drinking Bros Double and that deposits. Uh, D'Anthony, we do. A, need, we need more to gamble on. We do. We get a monster show tonight. Yeah, we get a monster we do, show yeah. tonight. We um, Will he's a, he's a man of few words, but you can tell he's seen some shit. Uh, and live through some shit. He's one, on one of the biggest missions of all time. Yep. Uh, Jamie, why don't you uh, get us into this interview, please, with Mr. Uh, Will Chesney. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We got a big guest on today. Yeah. Monster yeah. of a man. He is a, he's a, you know, m- even if not in stature. Yes. He's still a monster of a man. Monster of a man, I would say. Um, we got Will Chesney on the show. Any relation, Will? No, no relation. <laughs> to, I to, wish. To Kenny. Do you, do you know Kenny's whole sitch? No. Nah, what's going on? He's, uh, much. Much. there's a rumor that he's, he's a gay man, that he's a homosexual man. Have Why would he that? not just be gay, though? I don't know. He got married to Renee Zellweger, and then... Well, she looks like a dude, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. And then they got divorced uh, two days later. Maybe so. that's like a transition <laughs> period for him. Yeah. Are you, are you married? Are you married to a man or a woman? No. Not married. <laughs> <laughs> I have a girlfriend. <laughs> do, you, do you? Is it complicated? It's, it's complicated sometimes. <laughs> it's yeah. always. Goddamn right it is. It's, it's always complicated. Should be. Yeah, buddy. Uh, you wrote a book mm. called No Ordinary Dog that is out everywhere, um, which was written for your dog, Cairo, uh, who was on the Osama bin Laden raid in 2011. Um, that's a crazy story, man. Uh, why did it take so long to get a, to get a book written uh, about it now, you think? We just took our time writing it. It wasn't an easy process. Working with Joe Layden was... It was nice. It made things easier, at least on my end. And he put together, helped me put together a great story. And then we also had to get it approved. The approval process takes a little bit as well sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah the Department of Defense. So for, for Matt's book, uh, if you haven't bought it, you can buy that too. Thank you for my service. You can bang, bang both books. Get both mm-hmm. of them. Thank you for my service. And uh, No Ordinary Dog out now. This one took 17 yep. months at the DOD. Uh, I had to email. I had to send an email. To, I, I still remember her name to this day. Mm-hmm. Kelly McHale. Um, I sent her an email for 53 straight weeks. Every Friday at 4 o'clock. I did it Andy Dufresne style from uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Nice. Yeah, did you have to go through the same thing? Uh, it just, we just waited a long time, but it all finally ended up getting approved. So you waited it out. You didn't, you didn't have to email or have your lawyers call or anything? I think some people called for me, but I never had to call. Hmm. Look at how secretive this one is. Holy shit. Well, I mean, it seems like... How, how many edits did you have to do after it came back from the DoD? I think only one edit. Oh, shit. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we... They made... What, they, was the, yeah. Yeah, what was the redaction? Do you remember? <laughs> Just stuff they didn't want in the book, man. Yeah. You know, ours... Do a deal. Well, so, no, because... I, and that's why I'm curious. Some, some of it was were. stupid. Like, they wanted to remove... Like, I think Matt referred to somebody as a James Bond or some shit. Yes. And, and they, they made him out. remove that out. Like, everybody... What the fuck? Why, why is that, though, the line? The word uh, James Bond was redacted. Um, there was another part with Inspector Gadget that was redacted. Nice. Oh, cool. Don't that's know nice. why. It's, it's I don't super know why. Dumb. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't remember what your, your redactions were? There's a couple simple things, and there was some things that I understood about yeah, gear and yeah. things. But I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a pretty serious situation. Buried. Yeah, sure. there was uh, there was some things that I wrote in there about uh, the the process to to go through like Q school and stuff, and mm. they took out, mm. and they were like, "Hey, man, we don't really want anybody else knowing." Right. That I understood, and I was yeah. fine with. The other shit right. where I was just like, uh, like the word "pod," they wouldn't let the word "pod" be in there if you were, you know, like sleeping in a pod overseas. Mm. I don't think we use the word "pod." That's strange. Ugh. Strange. Um, and I had to imagine 
for you, uh, you know, you worked with another author. What was his name? Joe Layden. Joe Layden, Joe Layden yeah. Great guy. Um, yeah. And uh, and then working with a dog is obviously difficult because the dog doesn't speak English. So I'm sure that no, took man, it's a hard while. To, it took a little bit when I started handling Cairo just to mm-hmm. get the voice switching down to, you know, the emotions run up and down the leash when it comes to dog training. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's funny. I had to get that Mike Rillen said the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're surrounded by a bunch of teen guys and, mm-hmm. you know, it's nothing but jokes. So for you to clap your hands and brrr, all that crap around a bunch of guys, it's like, eh, it took me a minute to come around. But mm-hmm. it's all about communicating with the dog. The dog can't talk. You know, he doesn't know what you're saying. You know, he understands that. Mm-hmm. Right. Did, uh, did they let the dog read the audiobook? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I actually had one of my dogs in there with me, Nala. <laughs> mm. I did. So if you hear things in the background, that's uh Oh, and yeah, that's funny. Nala. That's funny. Is that real? Yeah. So the dog's barking in the background of the audiobook? She doesn't bark. She didn't move the whole time. She oh, slept through the whole thing. No. <laughs> uh, did you read your own audiobook or did did they have somebody else? Did yeah. they have like the British guy? No, I read my own audiobook. I narrated it. That's good. Was it? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, they said that uh, people like it when you narrate your own book. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they love it. It's funny, man. I I had because my first one was in uh, 2015, mm-hmm. and they bitched. They wanted that British guy. It used to be this British guy that used to read like I don't know 80 or 90 percent of them, and then it all kind of switched uh, sort shortly after that. Um, how long did that process take you? It took five or six days. It took a minute. Yeah, it was harder than I thought it would be. That's what she said. But yeah, no, it took. Nailed it. The first day really surprised me. You're. Uh, Got to you know sit there with this microphone in your face. Yeah, you to speak right into the microphone. Read every sentence perfectly. Yeah. Proper. Try to put some, and then it wears on your voice after a little while. So the next day, I was feeling it. I was a little surprised, but strange, I guess right? It's well worth it. Yeah, because yeah. you, you no, go mm-hmm. into day three of that, and you have no voice whatsoever, and you're just like, God damn it, man! If I fuck up this one phrase one more time, I'm going to shoot myself. Seriously, I could see it's, you raging out in the booth. Just like punching no, the goddamn there. plexiglass out. It was a little frustrating. It was a, by the end of the day, I was pretty spent. Yeah, I'm sure you were the same. Yeah. But, what would you say is harder, going through buds or going through an audiobook? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a toss. <laughs> the long six days in a sound booth, my man. Uh, yeah, that's worth it. Everybody, yeah, I didn't think they would actually want me to read it, but I guess that's. Everybody seems to like it too. I didn't. I didn't know how well I did, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. Okay. It were you know, it's the same with podcasts, man. Where audio is taken over, and you know, look, the, the people always bitch that uh, our shows aren't long enough. Yeah, and uh, they always want longer yeah. shows. And it's like, hey, man, there's yeah. audio books out there if you want to hear. Yeah, we're all doing of us speak longer. We're doing Matt, a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, Matt read his own as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and you yeah. know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the typical average audio book is about six hours plus. Mm-hmm. Um, it's six to nine hours, yeah. Yeah, depending a, upon a, how long it is. That's, yeah. And if you do it perfectly every single second of that book, then it's six to nine hours of recording time. But that n- is not going to happen. No. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Yeah. No, no fucking way. That's not what Especially happens. not with military dudes because we use, like, fuck as a comma in our sentences right. all the time. Right. Like, uh, so anyways, fucking uh, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't imagine. Dude, I haven't had to do that yet. I'm glad that I haven't had to because I think I would rage the fuck out. I think you'd be pretty good at it. Well, it's one of those things, once you get used to it, uh, like Matt got in a, in a good groove mm-hmm. after the first day, yeah. and then he was able to, to carry it through. Um, yeah. I, we, I, 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 we hired a bunch of actors, so like they're interjecting, and that kind of helps break mm-hmm. it up, but... Yeah, the first one was was brutal once you get used to it. Any interest in writing another one, another book one day? Well, you guys yeah, right now, we'll see what happens. You guys have uh, we have a young adult kind of a, version. kind of another book. It's, yeah, it's the young adult version. Yeah. Which I don't know what is that. Are you, are you trying to like frame the story differently to explain <clears throat> the dog and war to them, or is it just less profanity? What is it? Yeah, less profanity it takes out. It's just for kids to read, so teenage kids. Uh, when I donated Cairo's vest to the nine eleven museum, one of the guys there kind of yeah. reminded me of a few things. One of them was. A lot of children don't know what 9-11 is. It's been, yeah. it's been a while now. Mm-hmm. And how they do relate when they come to the museum is like, they look at helmets, fireman helmets. And right. Boots. And anything dog related kind of gets the point across, I think. Have telling you, this story and, yeah, children's book kind of way is great. Yeah. I, hope, I hope kids learn a lot from it. Everybody seems to be loving the 
the first book. So yeah, it's it's doing great. And the second, actually, the the kids book, I'm really interested in that because I wonder, have you guys thought at all about turning that into a graphic novel or some shit like that? Because I think that would destroy it with like a little cart, like Cairo, the cartoon dog, but like it makes it real for some of these younger kids. Like they don't understand. Like you said, there's a whole this whole new generation, whatever they're called, whatever mm-hmm. their names are, I, it's Generation Y maybe or whatever the fuck. Ah, uh, Generation Archangel now, according to oh, Elon Musk. God, so. that guy. Oh, man, he's crazy. Yeah. But I, I like it. <laughs> but they don't know what 9-11, you're right, they don't know what 9-11 is. They have no idea why yeah. we've been at war for 18 years. They have no idea. No, because they're, they're still in school and that, you know, that happened after they yeah. were born. So uh, you forget it was 19 years ago at this point now. Almost, yeah. Almost. And yep. um. You know, I kind of uh, look. I was I'm fascinated by your story. And before we get into the Bin Laden raid, I, I kind of want to learn a little bit about you. Um, where did you grow up? Uh, southeast Texas, a small town. Grew up uh, like any Texas kid. Played a little, played a little football. Mm-hmm. We lived in a trailer park, so like we were super poor, but we I had to work. So if I wanted a car, so I right. quit playing football. Got a job. Nothing too crazy. As soon as um, I could, I signed up with the Navy. I decided I wanted to be a SEAL, maybe around middle school. I loved the water. My grandpa, he was in the Navy. <laughs> you know, I wanted to test myself, see if I had what it took. And, uh, you know, I, I signed up as soon as I could just to get out. I didn't want to go to college. College really wasn't. In, in the cards, I was really yeah. passionate. Let's be real, though. I didn't have anything. It wasn't because your grandfather was in the Navy or because you liked water. You watched Navy SEALs. And Charlie oh, Sheen yeah. became your hero, and then you wanted to be a SEAL, right? That's what happened. I read a, read a bunch of books. I yeah. watched the movies. Yeah, of course, man. There is people, but for, I do love the water. People forget about all those books. Like there were a ton of books when we were when we were growing up, mm-hmm. like uh, Inside Delta Force that uh, that uh, Sergeant Major wrote, and then like uh, God, there were a bunch of them. There were a bunch of books about special operations. Come, everybody like talks so much shit about people writing books now, right. but the first Sergeant Major and the first Commander of Delta. Wrote both wrote books, so I feel like just shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, let's just enjoy the information. Stop giving people like uh, Will and 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 Matt hard times about what they're writing about. Look, it's it's interesting material and it's the best recruiting tool that you will ever have. I like agree. Seeing real personalities yeah, no, think... who are actual operators talking about what they did. Yeah. That there's no better recruiting tool. Like no movie. Like Navy SEALs was great. Or yeah, it was a great movie, but. No movie has ever recruited more people into a specific branch of the military than Black Hawk Down. So many dudes are rangers because of that fucking movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the best recruitment tool ever. Because it was real. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. some bullshit like, you know, Chuck Norris is Chuck Norris and all. But that movie, Delta Force, those movies, Delta Force he made, those are fucking retarded. <laughs> like he's running around in a cut off <laughs> denim shirt, like a sleeveless denim shirt buttoned up. With two Uzis fighting off a whole village of fucking Vietnamese. He was like, come on, man. What Go the fuck on, is this shit? Brother. Uh, let me ask you this. It's got, it's, got, it's got to be surreal that you have grew up in a trailer park. And now you're right. I, like you wrote a book, man, that's out everywhere uh, with a major publisher. How crazy is that? Yeah. Did you ever dream that growing up in a trailer park? No, not really. So <laughs> It's pretty cool. And everybody seems to be loving it. So Yeah. Yeah, that was important to me, man. It's a piece of history. I wanted to tell Cairo's story right, and everybody's loving it. It's of good. course, man. Um, how yeah. hard is Buds, by the way? Oh, they gotta they make you want it. That's for sure. Six, <laughs> seven months. I mean, the way I've kind of put it lately is like you literally have to be willing to sacrifice your life for your brothers, right? Mm-hmm. Jump on a grenade like that. That's no joke. So the guys are there just to say that they're Navy SEALs. You got to really want it, man. They make you. Was there one guy in particular you were trying to call out right there? Maybe a guy from Las Vegas that tried to get a gun during the fucking Yeah. Vegas Anybody you know. Because <laughs> he doesn't I stop. really have no idea what you're, ta- <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Dan, I don't Dan, watch the... Dan Bilzerian? No? No? Yeah, no, no I, I don't watch the news much lately. You ch- are you checked out of it? Or are you all done with it? No. Well, I'm kind of back in it a little bit now, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, you personally uh, yeah. are now, but as far as like, you know, watching, uh, like, are you into like fake news? You, do you, you know, do you watch it and I've be like, been, man, this is all bullshit? I don't really watch it much anymore. Sometimes I do. It just depends on what's going on, but I don't watch too much news now. What do you listen watch? to a lot of podcasts? Yeah. A lot of podcasts, a lot of audio books, man. Yeah. What other? I, try to, I live, I live on the water and I got two melon walls. So they, yeah. uh, I try to, yeah, they keep me busy. You know, what other podcasts are you podcasts? listening to? 
you know, the big ones, Joe and Tim, mm-hmm. Marcus's, mm-hmm. Any, like any brain health, any nutrition. So, man, there's so many of them out there. A lot of, there's Jordan Peterson here and there. Yeah, okay. He's, he's an interesting guy. I, I feel like he's the kind of guy that even if you don't agree with him, he has a lot of interesting shit to say, kind of like Dave Rubin. Like, yeah. I feel like you can completely disagree with that guy, but he very rarely takes shit personally. He's mm-hmm. just like, Here's the information as I understand it. I like guys like that. Same. Same. It doesn't really matter to me what they believe because for me it's still enriching. There's still an experience and a perspective that he's describing that can make me maybe learn more outside of what I already know. Yeah. And uh, I don't see a whole lot of that on the left anymore, unfortunately. No. Like you used to see a lot of it. Yeah. Like it used to be there used to be a lot of fucking like center left authors like uh that would really write like even not not necessarily gonzo style journalism but they really got down into it and wrote real shit yep. and now like david engel or richard engel used to be like that now mm-hmm. he's kind of like become a shell it's really disappointing yeah man it's uh it's a different world out there today um let me ask you how long were you in uh the military before you got uh the the bin laden raid you know tossed onto your lap i was in for 13 years i got out and 2015, I think it was. So, in 2011, yeah. So I was in 10, 11 years. Yeah, 10, 11. Do you did you know what you were getting into? Did they specifically say, "Hey, man, this is the this is the Bin Laden raid"? Is it like the movies and the TV shows and shit? It's just like the movies. Who <laughs> watched Zero Dark Thirty with that handsome fella, Chris Pratt? Mm. That guy, Spe- I love, speaking I love that of guy. speaking of Chris Pratt, <laughs> he, he just got cast in our buddy Jack uh, Carr's uh, The Terminal List. Yeah. Did you see that? No. Yeah. Did really? So, so uh, Amazon bought the terminal list. Uh-huh. They're going to make a series, like a TV series out of it, and Chris Pratt is going to play the main character. You're kidding. It's fucking yeah. great. Jack Carr is a badass, by the way. If you haven't watched his books yet, Jack or Carr. watched. If you haven't read his read books, his books yet, yeah. go fucking read that shit. That's I got amazing. his book back writer. there, and I can't wait. Yeah. yeah Jack's a great guy. I, I mean, Chris that's is like a great the, guy. Yeah. That's the best fucking combination of people that could have possibly happened right there. I'm really excited about Seriously. this fucking series. That's fantastic. Hopefully, yeah. shit can get back to normal so they can actually fucking film it. So we can yeah. see it because it's going to be, we're not going to see it until at earliest the fall of 2021, right? Yeah. Uh, Even yeah, if they started filming good now. Buddy yeah. Jared Shaw on that too. Y'all guys know him. He's, he's a great man. He's on, he's going to be in the series? I, I, he's having to do something with it. Yeah, I'm pretty mm. sure. I don't, I don't know exactly. I don't talk to him much, but. That's yeah. awesome. Well, hey, just met, yeah. walk me through the Bin Laden raid. Um, uh, were you guys training at uh, Area 51 and all that shit? We did some training. We just did training as normal. We just knew that who we were going after is different, but we were always training. You know, maybe we knew it was a little more dangerous because we figured might have something rigged to blow up or right. Yeah, it might get more intense, but uh, we planned some more, more contingencies. But are you surprised? We were at always all? ready for anything. Are you surprised at all that he didn't pilot. like click clack off an S vest or some shit? I know he didn't probably yeah, they have S vest. Like I, I know. He didn't. Yeah. He probably didn't have time to throw one on. I guess maybe I don't know in that situation. But I are you surprised? Like Al Baghdadi kind of died like a coward too, and Bin Laden died trying to hold his wife in front of him. So I, yeah. I, I wonder if don't they all like, kind of? But yeah, no, we were surprised. Yeah. We definitely thought something would be rigged to explode. That's yeah. why Cairo was a central role. I mean, the dogs always are a central role. Yeah. Did the dogs great go tool, in? Great man. Yeah. Did the dogs go in first? We did. Uh, we did the perimeter first mm. just to see if there's any escape routes well, well yeah but then the helo crashed right so that presents a whole other fucking challenge yeah. for the dog especially because it actually wasn't that big of a deal those guys didn't skip a beat man that's what happens when you just put in that much training yeah it actually yeah the, the guys didn't skip a beat they fucking crushed it the pilots crushed it like seriously think about how bad that could have gone the oh guy, man he's like man i'll fly that thing out of here like okay that's how badass you are good yeah. job uh <laughs> Everybody didn't skip a beat, and that's like one thing nobody planned for. Yeah, I, I, I don't think our uh, helicopter pilots, especially helicopter pilots, get enough credit. Like you watch the guy, um, uh, we were soldiers. Remember that movie? That that dude, Snake. They, oh his yeah. His nickname was Snake Shit or whatever the fuck. That dude that um, he won all sorts of awards for it, but he was mm-hmm. he was like continuously a, with the only guy flying in, picking up wounded people, taking them out. Those guys are crazy as shit. Yeah, to fly that because helicopters aren't really great at staying in the air. They crash a lot. Right, right, right. For fucking sometimes, like a one little fucking mechanical issue, and that bird is going down. Yeah, and you run into something that you can't see. You're you're flying like near ground level a lot, so it's not like you're thirty thousand feet in the air. You're right there. I've almost 
like on two separate raids, my pilot, is, my helicopter pilot, has had to bank to miss power lines in Iraq, right? And if we would have hit those, we would have been fucked. Yeah. Like we would have smashed in the ground, everyone would have died. And it was like this close to doing, like, holy <laughs> shit. This is like a regular yeah, thing. There's, just like there's a bunch of dog stories out there, there's a bunch of helicopter pilot stories, man. These guys are good to go. Well, there are a bunch of dog stories, but there aren't a whole lot of dog stories where the number one terrorist on earth gets killed. Yeah, uh, and I, I get a dumb question for you. Are you in one of those helicopters with the dogs, or how does that work? Yeah, we didn't crash, though. We landed on the outside. Oh, we, so you we were in the other troops. one? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't know how that worked. Of like, all right, you load up everybody, or if there's, you know, you were on the ground first, and then you secure the perimeter with the dog. Yeah, it was never any, any helicopter crashes. It was fortunate. Gotcha. You gotcha, were never gotcha. in any. That's surprising. Yeah, you weren't, but the, the other plane was. With yeah. the amount of kinetic operations that somebody in your position would have done, that's impressive that you've never been involved in a helicopter crash, to be honest. Yeah, it was very fortunate, man. Yeah. A lot of guys were. Yeah, a lot. I mean, we've had shit. J- just during my deployment, we had three separate ones. One with our fucking brigade commander. Shit. Actually, two. I'm sorry, two with our brigade commander. He lived through both of them? Yeah. <laughs> I think he got shot through his testicle and lost a nut, though. On the second, the second time it happened. Fuck, man. Yeah. Uh, you were laughing at that, you big Lance Armstrong fan. <laughs> totally kidding. Hey, well, he's from that's Texas. That's a rough wound, man. But yeah, it is. That's not fun. Gonna, that's a hell of a story. I'm sure you well, well I, look, you have a hell of a story, dude. You, were, you fucking helped kill bin Laden, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Uh, you don't seem that yeah. amped about it. Um, it, is that... it was one of the best moments of my life. But just everybody on that team... I don't like talking about myself. It was like, I, I talk about Cairo. Never mm-hmm. anybody could have replaced me on that team, man. Um, if it wasn't for Cairo, I wouldn't have been on the mission. He well, was a great dog. He that's, deserves that's, that's Did a, you get to see him post. after he died, after he got shot through the face? I saw him, yeah. Did you teabag him or anything like they do in Call of Duty? For sure. That would have, how funny would it have been if guys would have just stood around and take some cell video of them teabagging him? Because you don't play video games, but in first I person always shooters, wondered, yeah, right. dude. In do first you person do shooters, that? when you light somebody up, sometimes you'll walk over their corpse and teabag them and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. Just crouch up and down. I just wanted to know that maybe somebody on the Bin Laden raid did that. Just lie to me and tell me it happened, please. Right? Is that not in Robert Business Book? Let me ask you. This is a serious Rob's question. A character. This is a, yes. Oh my God. I love drinking with Rob O'Neill. He's the best. One of my favorite human beings to drink with, actually. Um, I have a serious question. Uh, right. At what point after did it hit you that you had just been part of probably one of the most famous operations in the history of this country? Like Bay of Pigs is a big one mm-hmm. because it failed. Bin Laden raid's got to be right there, onesie twosie with that one, right? I, I, I'd probably put Bin Laden at one, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, just because it's more recent, though. But the Bay of Pigs was a big deal at the time. Almost, <sighs> almost provoked a nuclear war. So, like, the point of it is, what, at what point after the raid? Because I know as soon as shit is secure on the ground, you start doing SSC, and then you pack up and get the fuck out. So at what point did, like, you, like, just take a deep breath and realize what the fuck you just did? When I got back to the hangar, so we landed. I mean, like, we didn't think anybody would make well, We knew there was a good chance that some people would not make it back, right? Like, yeah. Something might happen, so we made sure our affairs were in order. But when we landed and I looked around, everybody was alive and mm. okay, you know, for the most part. We uh, accomplished the mission, and I got to do it with my dog, so that was cool. So that's yeah. kind of when it really hit, sunk in. Yeah, I'll never forget that moment. It was good. Everybody was okay, and it was done. Uh, did you guys party afterwards? Like, was there a party inside? Like, I, I imagine like champagne, <clears throat> beers, <Yeah>. something. <clears throat> was there anything like that? Or did you just go back out and do another fucking job and that's it? Then we went, as soon as we landed, it was cool to see everybody there that could be to support us. I don't know yeah. why I didn't expect that, but it was just awesome to see. Like, it was late. Probably when we landed, it was dark and everybody showed up. Well, you, you've seen those videos in, like, downtown New York and Yankee Stadium and shit when they announced that Bin Laden was dead. People lost their fucking minds. I, yeah, I mean, dude, everybody knows where they were at that moment. Yeah. Like, that, that's one of those moments in life where you're like, dude, I know exactly where I was. Yeah. For me, I remember reading, it was a tweet by The Rock, ironically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and that's what I was like, wait, what? Uh, Did he say something about Bin Laden just smelled what The Rock was cooking? Because that I, would, I would be the best. He should have done that. Let's Let's get a time machine and make that happen yeah it was the rock uh who had the first like social media tweet and then it just kind of trickled out after that and they said oh you know uh obama was going to come on 
and then make a speech to the nation about but everybody it. everybody like, already oh, knew. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, but people knew. Um, for you guys, like, I, again, I, I picture it to be like a World Series where you're dousing each other with beer. Was there alcohol? Was there partying? Like, what, what's the first thing that happens when you land? Eventually, I went to the to a bar, a local bar. <laughs> it was Rob, and we, we definitely partied up, that's oh, for sure. Man, that but, guy. And he was chain smoking know, the went. whole time, I'm sure. Uh, we probably both were. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, it was a good time. Then we did the little dog and pony show, but it didn't last long. Yeah. It was back to work like normal. And, and then it was kind of surprising how everybody just – we got stuff to do yeah i mean how hard is that for for our uh people out there in the audience that have been in gunfights and shit before there is like when when there's a lull in the action you definitely feel fatigued and shit it's weird like the adrenaline goes away and you feel like shit how is it ramping up for the next operation after just taking down bin laden i mean that's got to be that's got to be a mental exercise to get yourself in the right headspace for that i was actually excited to be operating again i was back to being a soldier not a dog handler anymore oh yeah yeah, and I had some problems. It kind of covers in the book. Uh, so it was good to be back with my teammates, and mm-hmm. I went on deployment, but I got blown up my first op. Oh, shit. So you, so got, shit. you got Perfect. blown up your first op after the Bin Laden? After Bin Laden? Yeah, just, by, just a little hand grenade. Was, everybody was okay. Definitely could have been way worse. So it got me. That was kind of the tipping point to my exit out of the Navy. Yeah. No shit. Oh, yeah. That'll, that'll do it. Fuck, man. <laughs> That's gnarly. It definitely could have been worse. I got two Forrest Gump wounds. You guys want to see them? Yes. Yeah. Let's see your ass. Yeah. 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 See it on. Let's Ray do Ca- it. Look, Ray <laughs> Care pulled his dick out on the show yesterday, dude. <laughs> of yes, course he did. Good <laughs> guy, <laughs> dude. <That's> funny. <laughs> <laughs> he never fucking stops. We have pictures because he brought a signed picture of himself, which is on Actually, the desk. Yeah, them to me. That's right. There's yeah. a signed picture of. Um, oh, we will. And then he, we've got a picture of, of uh, the two of us with Ray's dick out over yeah. his own picture yep. so that's how much he loves himself that he put his own dick on his own face yep. which yeah, was great so Yeah, never has any Pretty man stuff. loved himself more than Ray Care loves himself ah, yeah. I love Ray Care he's a great, he's a great yes. dude so, he's hey, a great did, guy he is did you get to see Bin Laden's face like after he died like you got to see him like did everybody go and look at him we were around it for a little while but things were pretty busy yeah yeah, busy. yeah. I mean, after, had a job to do, man. Yeah, just so you know, so, Ross, after like the site is secure, you do something called sensitive site exploitation, mm-hmm. which is basically just searching for fucking shit. Like they found terabytes Computers of pornography and, and shit. Oh no, shit! You didn't? Yeah, you don't know about this. They like not not they had uh, when they inspected the computers later back at what whatever who whichever agency did that. There was like tons of pornography on Bin Laden's computer. Really? You don't remember this? There was a huge story. Uh, no. Yeah. I, he, what they say. what yeah. did they say? What the porn was? I don't know. No, I, I'd I be curious copy, in that. But, no, no. <laughs> I'd be curious in if it was like gay porn or if it was like Mia Khalifa, where yeah. it was just like somebody yeah. who I don't think it was a gay. wide plethora. Yeah, I'm probably. sure. I don't know. Who knows? I'm sure you could find out. Somebody knows. You could probably find what out. What porn did? Ben yeah, what porn did uh, Bin Laden? Watch. Yeah, pull it up because I got to know what Ask kind of Google porn machine. he was watching. Yeah, in 2017, they released a huge cache of it's it's. A, an extensive collection of modern pornography videos. That's what modern. They said. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. I don't know if they fucking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they. Modern's probably like fake, huge fake tits and, and shit like that. And, like, and uh, he's probably not watching porn. amateur. Yeah, incest porn. Too, he's, yeah. he's not watching like girl next door amateur shit. You know. Well, but it seems like uh, they decided not to release the porn stash. I think that would have been great. Oh, honest. that would have been awesome. Can you imagine dude? some guy getting tried under the National Security Act? Like, hey, you stole classified <laughs> hard drives. Like, look, I just wanted to see what porn Bin Laden was watching, brother. That's all, Come on. dude. That's all That's I wanted it. to see was that porn. Can brother. you imagine if you started a website, binladenporn.com, and it's just all the porn that he watched? And then you create a challenge. You have to watch all the porn that Bin Laden owned. I think that's a great idea. Like, because think about all the celebrities in history, right? Um, and even though Bin Laden's a piece of shit, he's still, he was still famous. But what if you could go through all of their porn history yeah. and then you could find out? Because I think you, that would give you a much deeper connection to a celebrity once yeah. you knew what kind of porn yeah. they were watching. Yeah. You know? Maybe. Learn something new, I guess. Yeah, because yeah. you've got your own <laughs> sick shit going on. I can tell, obviously, just by looking at it's you. It's by right the, the ridges in his skull. You can tell that just there's some weird shit going yeah. on over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's called phrenology. You may have heard of it. It was disproven 200 years ago. <laughs> No, we all got something, some weird stuff going on. That's for sure. Goddamn right, well, we do. Uh, so no, I, after yeah. the Bin Laden raid with Cairo, wh- where does the dog go next? Because you said you you went 
you were back to being a soldier again without the dog. Where does the dog go after that? Sailor. He, he was a sailor. I was back to being in the shooter. Mm-hmm. Had to give him up. He was a spare dog for the squadron, so he stayed within the family. You know, I'm his dad, and all the other guys are his uncles. And uh, there's a couple of, well, there's great guys taking care of him. So a couple of MAs, mostly, I think, took care of him. So I knew he was in good hands as a spare dog. He was a great dog. It's like one of those plug-and-play dogs. You know, you still need to keep up the maintenance with him, but if you need him, like, in a, as a spare dog, dogs get shot or injured all the time or mm-hmm. killed all the time. He's a great spare dog to plug him into a new sh- uh, handler, you know. So eventually he started uh, showing his old age. You know, he had been shot before the Bin Laden mission. So he'd been shot through his arm and through his chest. And as you know, those dogs don't make it through that most of the time. Yeah, yeah. The situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a large round to go through a small dog. And it, it's a large round, and their uh, their ability to fight infection is not nearly as good as ours either. Mm. Um, yeah. So, like so, a small dog like that. I mean, when you get hit with a, a round like that, that uh, came from a third world country, usually the guy didn't wash his hands before he loaded the round into the fucking magazine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's got some poop on it. Ah, it's yeah. probably got some poop. Yeah, that's I why they, so. they hit you <clears throat> with a cocktail of antibiotics that could kill anything except for maybe AIDS, I guess. Poop everywhere. Virus. You ever yeah. fall in a, a shit ditch? Oh, yeah. I, actually, I have. It's oh, a funny yeah. story. I was in fucking. What's uh, a shit ditch? Hang so on. I'm telling it's you. a shit ditch. Yeah. And fucking. <laughs> so I'm walking down a exactly street. Exactly what it is. I'm walking down a paved street in, a, in what would be considered a suburban neighborhood in Iraq, right? In Southeast Baghdad. <laughs> And I see, a, I see a median, <laughs> it's a median, it's a grass looking median. And I walk into it and all of a sudden I'm up to my dick in shit water. Oh. And I had to do oh, the rest of the patrol. Yeah. That was, was yeah, it was a fucking, it was bullshit. Then we had to go do raids after that. And I just had shit dick all day. Oh, I could smell myself on the helicopter uh, ride home. I threw the Everybody boots, the boots were me. gone. The fucking yeah. pants, the socks, threw them all away. Because fuck that. I'm not keeping that shit around. What does everybody else who on your team say? Are Suffer. They, are they pissed off? Yes, they're, they they hate it. What are you like, gonna do? You what stupid you fuck. <laughs> pants off, pants off. I'm gonna porky pig at home, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your pants on. How funny how intimidating would it be if we invaded a country with uh no pants? Like we're wearing yeah, boots, dude. kits, no pants. Good just luck. dicks out. Look at that. Fuck you. Yeah, Ray, Ray, just cock Ray, plates. Yeah, Ray <laughs> invaded our set with no pants on uh, two days ago. Oh, so. that motherfucker. <laughs> just won't stop with his nudity yeah. all the time. What kind of dogs nice. do you have now in real life? I got a couple of Malinois. got a boy. And uh, Zach, I got his daughter. She's about six, month old, six months old. Okay. Right on. Yeah, they keep me busy. I bet. Any thought of uh, training them and, and, and selling them down the road? We had uh, Mike Ritlin on the other day, and uh, he kind of went through the whole process mm-hmm. with us of, of training dogs and selling them and things like that. And uh, I didn't know if that was something that would interest you in the future. Maybe. Maybe not. I was, you know, I consider myself a decent trainer. I train my own dogs, and you know, I know what I'm doing, but I'm a, I'm a – I know that I have a handle as a dog as an operator. That makes more sense. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's a whole, yeah. like, Mike. I, I'm Mike, not old. It's a, he's a dog trainer. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I'm he, a dog trainer a little bit, but right, he's, yeah. like, con- committed his life to it. And yeah. I, I love it. I love doing dog training. And it may be, may be down the road, but um, I love being a, a handler and an operator. And I can teach yeah. that all day long. Yeah, that he, makes he, more sense. He definitely went down. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a commitment to do what he does. Like when he sells oh, yeah. one of these really high price yeah. well trained dogs to a family, he goes and stays in their town <laughs> for a couple of days or maybe a, a up commitment. to a week. Like it's a whole fucking shit show to do that. Just training those dogs up. And then yeah. you're just training the dogs. Mm-hmm. You got to train the people too. You got to yeah. find the proper homes, train That's the true, people, yeah. train the dogs. Hey, do you have any, uh, yeah. like you, it's based on the book. It seems like, you know, you've got some stories to tell and you're a pretty good storyteller. So have you, do you have any thoughts on maybe writing some fiction like Jack Carr does and some of these other guys like Tyler Gray's working for SEAL Team now and all this stuff? Like, do you have any inclination? I'm to that? open for whatever makes sense, man. You know, just try to yeah. <clears throat> keep it respectful. I still I'm going to respect all the right. teammates. And other than that, yeah, I'm open to any other opportunities. Maybe a children's book. There's a young adult book. I don't know. Yeah, I really uh, it's keeping it open, man. Everybody loves the first book. Yeah, it's a good one. And I'm just going to keep, yeah, it's great feedback. That's a very important. I'm just going to keep pushing for it. Whatever comes, we'll see. Yeah. yeah it is. Speaking of respecting your teammates, um, how, how did you feel when the first book came out about SEAL Team 6? 
I was nervous. I just like, I just read through it really quick. I didn't know what was going to be in there. My name was going to be in there. So yeah. I get what everybody's saying and I was in the, in the same boat, but I mean, I was, it's a piece of history. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. They put Carol's name in the media. There was some stuff that wasn't completely accurate. There's some people that said they had him. I read books before being a SEAL. This is a, a great book for anybody join the military. Anybody want to be a handler? Anybody want to be a SEAL? Anybody who loves dogs? It's a, it's a piece of history. It's, I get to tell Cairo's story because it's true. Like that's a big deal to me. Um, I get to bring attention to what the, uh, these dogs do. They literally sacrifice their life mm. for us. That's a, you know, we treat them with the same respect. It brings attention to like the foundations, like Mike's foundation, Mike mm. and Jimmy Hatch and space, Spike's canine fund and John, John Devine. They, they do great, great things for these dogs that deserve the equipment that they're, they're getting them. The, the healthcare, I guess they're providing the homes. And then I tell a little bit of my personal story as well. I, like I said, I don't like talking about myself, but a lot of veterans out there that might be having some issues. You know, I went through my own set of issues. Telling my story helps and perfect. You know, I'll, I'll discuss what I've been through and <laughs> some of the modalities I've used. There's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of them out there mm-hmm. and there's a whole lot of good people out there. So if my message helps and cool, if, if not, then I'll shut up. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you and I have similar stories. Like there, a, I, I had as as everyone does a lot of issues. Well, anybody that does like kinetic shit, you know, issues kind of transferring my all the all the emotional tools I used over there, like rage and anger and shit like that, into something positive when I got back home because yeah. it's difficult to do that over there. It's easy. I mean, not easy, but it's you know that part of it's easy at least. But uh, you know. I've been in some pretty dark places like a lot of us have, like you have, and, and uh, my relationship with dogs more than people and, and some of those cases were what pulled me through. You know what I mean? So it's really oh, yeah, interesting. I mean, like it's no one knows that dog is man's best friend better than somebody that's, you know, gone through this kind of shit, I feel like. For sure. Kyra got me through. Like it just ended up being perfect timing. If I wasn't in my bad place transitioning out, they probably wouldn't have given him to me because I wouldn't have been able to take care of him as an operator. He's right. going through my stuff and he was going through his things. I got to take care of him and he took care of me. It was it really was good for my mental well being. I think a lot of people can relate to that, man. And you know, I had another dog named Hagen. She when Cairo passed, she got me through some tough times. Like mm-hmm. she just passed not too long ago. I been good. The dogs I have now got me through that. Everybody can be a good tool to use. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Who was the first call you made after the Bin Laden raid? Oh, my dad, I would say. And what? what? I sent a text to my mom. She can't hear. To, uh, but I, you know, send a little text out to her. Call my dad. What's the reaction of that? Because I, I would have to imagine, like, you, you couldn't be a prouder father than you know. First of all, you you hear about Bin Laden being killed, and then you find out that it was your son who was actually on the mission uh, and helped and was a part of it. That, that's got to be the, the best feeling in the world, I would imagine, right? Uh, he didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking hit the <laughs> fucking button. Uh, he, he let it ring three fine. times, then he hit the X. <laughs> and, he, right. and he goes, why the fuck are you mail. calling me? Text me. It's, it's, it's 2011. Text me. Stop trying to leave voicemails. Is, is that real? Did he pick up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It was a great conversation. Yeah. Oh, it was? Okay. <laughs> Cool. For sure. Yeah. And what, was he crying? Like, I can only imagine. He had to have been crying. Like, that's amazing. I don't know if he cried, but it was a, it was a good conversation, man. Yeah. Ah, that's awesome. Uh, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who's inspired you or helped you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Sorry, say that one more time. <laughs> Uh, the drinking bro of the week. Uh, this, this is the point in the drinking show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who's helped inspire you or helped you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? I would say Jared Shaw. He is, uh, he's so handsome. I don't know who's more handsome, him or Chris Pratt. He's his, his, uh, uh, but he's the one who reached out to me when I was in a, a really bad place. Um, <laughs> if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I would be right now. And he worked I definitely on, wasn't reaching out to people. Is he Chris Pratt's stuntman? I don't know exactly what he does. Because he, he does stunts. He, he does, he does guys a lot of stuff. He doesn't say much. Yeah. Like, hey, buddy, what's going on? He's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, stuff. Cool. Awesome. I know he yeah, did stuff. That's, that's our conversation. I know he worked on <laughs> I know he worked on one of the doing, Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but I don't remember if it was the yeah. first or second one. He's doing really good things. Yeah, he's a good, good man. 
crushing it out there. So I reached out to him and like, um, he drug me to one of the first brain treatment places I went to and I was in a terrible place. Which one did you go? Do you go to the one in Colorado, by the way? I went to one in California through the Brain Treatment Foundation. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lady yeah. Carol Williams. She's yep. amazing. That place yeah. is great. Chris actually gave him a shout-out not too long ago. Oh, cool. They're great yeah. people. That's yeah. great. Well, maybe he'll play you in the fucking movie. Now. Yeah. He's already, been, he's so. already been in a movie about that raid, but he, we could make a new one. Why not? Maybe Chris Those Pratt can play the dog. Eyes. He can play the dog. He could, be, he, could, he could be the voice of the dog in the cartoon no, movie of it. He could, he could be. He just put him in a dog suit. Yeah. He could run on all four. This is Chris Pratt He'd be the for funniest sake. dog ever. <laughs> yeah, he was. Chris Pratt, he could do I, anything. When I found out he was going to play uh, the main character in the Terminal List, I wanted to fucking Dude. comment on the thread that, like, hey, why don't you play him all as Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec? <laughs> like, play this fucking Perfect. murdering sniper, as, but as Andy Dwyer. That would be great. He's the only reason I watched Zero Dark Thirty. Because I'm like, yeah, I don't, don't want to watch it. Or maybe yeah, turned yeah. it off. And I was like, oh, Chris, Chris is in there. Yeah, okay, I'll watch it. They had man, a, he's they a huge had a, Chris Pratt fan. He is, yeah. I mean, he's a good man. Like, he is, love that you're saying dude, that. Yeah, he's no, a legit real, like, he is. Yeah, yep. He's, he's a, a good dude. Great well, God fearing man. That's for sure. Big fan for sure. Yeah. Well, listen, man. Uh, you, you wrote a hell of a book. Uh, go pick up No Ordinary Dog. Mm-hmm. It is available everywhere. Uh, Amazon is is the yeah. Uh, that's the classiest choice. And if you you've got, got kids, one way to do it. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you got kids. Uh, Warrior Dog, which is the young reader's edition, comes out on June 30th. Yes, yes, uh, June so, 30th. And the audio book is available uh, everywhere yep. is now as well. Uh, man, thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, it's great, man. Thanks for having me, guys. That's Cheers. Yes, great thank time. you. Yeah. Cheers, fellas. Uh, for Will, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.